Morning, folks. We'll be looking for your questions. Not much going on in the world of Rangers today, so desperately looking for some inspiration because struggling to find anything to get stuck in. Oh, what am I talking about? Of course, today is the day Rangers have qualified for the Europa League final for the first time in 14 years. Ladies and gentlemen, what a night. It was such an impressive game. It was such an impressive moment. Derek Clark's coming from his holidays all the way from his Malaga boat hole with a hangover, no less. That's how excited the big man is on the back of last night. And of course, Derek, you're off to Seville. Yeah, I'm I'm, uh, I'm checking out the place before coming back here and and, uh, and just under just under a couple of weeks, Johnny. Cannot wait. Uh, I'm over here for a, for a friend's wedding. Um, sourced out a, a Rangers pub in uh, Ben Al Medina last night and as you can imagine imagine the scenes were pretty wild in there fantastic uh, hospitality i must say um it, it was it was terrific to be a part of just part of that 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 crowd watching the game on the tvs can't imagine what it must have been like at, at ibrox last night i mean you're hearing people saying it's the best ever um it, it wasn't the best time to book a holiday all those months ago mate was it <laughs> it certainly wasn't no the thing is my friend is getting married as a as a fan of the the other uh, the other side of, of Glasgow. Oh. So I've, I've I've told them in no uncertain terms not to uh, do this again. Um, I missed the Red Star Bell game, uh, Belgrade game, um, because he had his stag do it at that point. So uh, yeah, not not too happy about that. But but hey ho, it was it was great last night to watch it on on the TV. Um, it was just a, a fantastic night. I think one of the best ever. You'd have to say. Yeah, absolutely incredible from from start to finish, Derek. I was up uh, till about half past five this morning, and then my alarm went off at eight, eight fifteen, I think, and I was up like wow. like a lark, just you know, no problem at all, straight up, bouncing up. Um, so it's quite <laughs> incredible what football can do for you. I mean, let's discuss the game. Rangers were absolutely brilliant. I, I have to say, I thought it was a tremendous team performance. They were at it from the get go. It was aggressive. They were pressing high. Obviously, Leipzig are dangerous, and obviously they're a good team. And Christopher Nkunu is a deadly striker, and you saw with his goal just what a finisher he could yeah. be. But listen, before we get to any of that, Rangers pushed forward and grabbed their first goal after twenty odd minutes. A wonderful build up through Glenn Kamara. Great bit of skill, and I thought Kamara in that more advanced position, Derek. I've never been convinced. I'm convinced now. Um, plays yeah. the ball in for Ryan Kent. He does what he does. Ball into the back post, James Tavernier taps it in. You're in dreamland. The right back of Rangers is the top scorer of the Europa League. Yeah. And the tie is... they got parity. Unbelievable yeah. moment. Yeah. Yeah, and it was, it was very similar to the chance Rangers had in Germany a week ago where Kent flashed it across the face and Tavernier just couldn't get there in time and, and he kicked the post. He was that frustrated in Germany, but... We managed to get on the end of this one. Uh, Ibrooks went bananas. Uh, the, the Ben Al Medina bar went bananas as well. Um, and you're right, Glenn Kamara hugely influential in that that first goal. We'll talk about his uh, his second goal very shortly, Johnny, which was uh, incredible. But great strength to uh, just hold the ball up and play in Kent. Um, and yeah, the ball across was uh, pitch. Uh, it was a pinpoint for for Tavi for a tap in and. Um, it was a goal that you needed. I've got to admit, when I seen the team lineups and, and there was no Kima Roof like everyone else, I think I was slightly concerned about where the goals were going to come from. Um, but the, the, to a man that they stepped up, the players up front, like uh, yeah, Rebo uh, was playing that false nine again. Scott Wright uh, that came on to a game, uh, and Ryan Kent certainly uh, done the business. But James Tavin here to be the top goal scorer in the Europa League. Uh, from right back just defies belief, doesn't it? I mean, it is really, it, it's it's madness to think about it. Yeah, and then the second goes in, Derek. I mean, I, it was delirium at that point. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful bit of play by Scott Wright and winning the ball high up the park. Bit of passing, gets the ball back and he lays it off to Glenn Kamara who basically passes the ball into the bottom left-hand corner. Keeper has absolutely no chance. It's a stunning finish. Rangers are in dreamland, it's 2-0, and you're thinking to yourself, wow, this is this is on. Yeah. Um, great finish, right? Um, but about five minutes later, it should be in three. 
Uh, ball comes in at the back post. James Tavernier, a wonderful header, knocks it down for Joe Aribo, and he skies it over. That, that would have been the game over right there and then. And yeah. at, at that point, Rangers have got them absolutely rocking. Leipzig don't know where they are. And I've got to say, Derek, I think the crowd, I mean, man of the match, no doubt, was Ibrox crowd. I, I, yeah. I mean, I wasn't there. I was watching it on the telly. I was doing all the stuff for the website. Josh was there. But it was unbelievable through the telly. So I, I can't yeah. even imagine what it was like there. Um, Josh will be coming in any moment now, so we'll, we'll, get, we'll get a bit of the detail <laughs> from him. Um, but it was just like Braga before them. They, they looked completely punch-drunk Leipzig in that first yeah. 35 minutes. Yeah, it was a blistering start. And I loved the, the, the moment when Kamara, well, first of all, taking a shot, which, uh, which is, is, is rare, and then to score and, and the, the, the calmness of the finish, Johnny, like you say, passed it into the corner. It was a, a supreme uh, finish from him. And then it was a lovely touch, of course. He, he goes to celebrate. He takes off the, the black armband and kisses it, of course, for, for, for Jimmy Bell. So uh, I love that. Um, and you're right. Um, the crowd was going, it was it was insane at that point. Um, and, and then you felt, just before the goal, actually, I was saying to a, a friend I was watching the game with, I was saying, I'd be quite happy if it stays 1-0 until the, the dying embers of the game, uh, and then Rangers get 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 a second because I wasn't too sure how if they get their noses in front, um, how maybe they would maybe sit back and just try and hold on to that, and it might change the the, the, the concourse of the game. But um, of course, uh, and Kuniko scores in, in in the second half, but they respond Rangers again as they have done consistently in uh, in the Europa League. Um, but at that point, you're thinking. Well, there's Joshua there. I'm sure he can tell us it uh, clearer how what it was like. But at that point, you're thinking this is actually on here. Um, so yeah, great scenes. Josh, we're just talking about the fact neither of us were at the game. We, we're, we're going to go through yeah. and it's going through it step by step. Um, and we're now at the sort of Joe Aribo miss. That's where we've got to. So it's two 0 Okay. But listen, you were there. We weren't. Just talk to us for a minute about that atmosphere last night. So I've just been back in the stadium there this morning and um, it's quite surreal kind of being in while well, I was there. I've been there this morning already, but at about uh, midnight. Um, the atmosphere, I think, we were just speaking about it there. It was emotional and, and I think that was why it was so successful because it stayed with the team the whole time. But it was, you know, when that goal went in, there was a moment of deflation, but the, the crowd right back with it. And the noise in moments, and especially when said songs come on, John Lundstrom song being one. Um, it was just it was just amazing. So, I think the last games they've all you know they've been so loud. But the the, the difference probably the the added thing last night I think was the emotion of the occasion. You could see that with the players, especially I thought for me going Kamara celebration where you see him obviously do his his tribute to Jimmy Bell. So um, really special and and as I say being back in there I brought this morning you can still kind of feel it in a way as if the uh, the stadium is still. Uh, recovering from um, a quite significant night, so fantastic, but a uh, terrible day weather-wise in, uh, in uh, Ibrox. That's all, all I'll say. You're getting soaked there, Josh. You, you better get yeah. back and get onto your uh, stats bomb and get some of these numbers up. Um, yeah, well, we'll absolutely. We'll, we'll keep you around for a little bit. Um, look, moving on to half-time, Derek, you get to that point and you think to yourself, wow, this is an opportunity like no other. 45 minutes from a European final. Something I don't think any of us ever thought we'd see again in our lifetimes. I mean, we were kicking about for the um, the 2008 game in Manchester. I really thought that was the sort of fag end of the Scottish football empire in terms of European performances. Given the polarisation that we're seeing, I never thought that Rangers would ever get back to a stage like this. And here they are. Now, the pressure was on at that point because it's yours to lose. You're there. You've got your foot in the final. And I have to say, probably that was when Leipzig came back in and had their best spell, sort of 25 minutes to half an hour um, after half time was the only time that they really dominated. And they seemed to get a, a boost as the game went on. I think they realised they had to just throw caution to the wind and go for it. Alan McGregor makes an incredible save. Um, from I think it was Campbell who was put through yeah. and, and, and the Austrian midfielder. Wonderful save. And you think to yourself, well, that's defining. That's that's the moment. But I think 30 seconds later, 
an unbelievable, and this this will not get talked about, right? It won't get talked about. And Joshua can probably wax lyrical about this once you finish your uh, Derek. Unbelievable ball by Angelino. Uh, oh. Impossible to defend. Impossible to defend. And the finish from Kunku, first time top corner. Honestly, it was an incredible goal. Uh, Johnny, can point, I just can I just say something on that? Because I'm so excited yeah. to talk about this. That is for me. I mean, it's unbelievable, but also it's unbelievable the fact that that's really the one moment, aside from Angelino on the first leg of policy, you see from Leipzig Leipzig over the two ties. And I think that just shows how well Rangers defended because this team were absolutely top, you know. And Kunku will go and play for a top five club in the the summer. Angelino obviously has been at Man City, but you see his quality of of delivery to keep them quiet for for that long. And, you know, Van Bronckhorst is speaking in the press conference about Cal Bassi and how his active defending is so important for the team and he said in the 3-1 defeat against Hibs when Van Bronckhorst is watching from the stands he's you know seen how um, effective he could be in a moment and and I think what you see with Lundstrom and Bassey and Goldson they're so agile and what that means is that they can stay tight to these players go with them that's aggressive and risky but it's, it's worked perfectly so to keep that quality quiet really for two legs as well as creating is, is you know remarkable yeah 100% Derek I mean were you concerned mm-hmm. at that point um, well, the, the goal itself, I was thinking, should Goldson get a bit tighter to Nkunku, but, but you're right, it's just it's just a quality ball. delivery. Yeah, it's just it's a ball and the finish is just exquisite, isn't it? So uh, you, yeah. you just need to hold your hands up and say it's a top quality goal. At that point, I wasn't too sure what I was thinking because I know Rangers you're can respond. Drunk. Let's be honest. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you were dead inside. You were like, yeah. yeah. The vodka had kicked in, that's for sure. Um, so it was just a state of delirium from start to finish, I think. But uh, yeah, again, we've seen it against Braga, of course, when they scored that goal and took it to extra extra time. They just find that inner belief, don't they, Rangers? And, and, they, and they can respond in-game, which shows the character and the belief of the players that they can they can do that. Um, and, and I always felt they would go on and get another goal. My, my wife actually said at halftime, both teams will score in the second half. Um, wow. so she she predicted it. I would say, oh, who's going to score first? Who's going to score first?" So, um, so she 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 got it spot on. And when yeah, when Lundstrom scores, I think everyone knew at that point uh, Rangers were going to do it. On predictions, I mean, I don't mean to revel in it, but I did tell you yesterday, folks, that it was going to be three-one Rangers, and I told you <laughs> all week. I've got absolutely no concerns about this Leipzig mob. I'm completely confident we're going through. <laughs> and and let me tell you, I feel. Rangers are going to win this tournament. I've been saying it now since prior to this this last uh, uh, two legged tie. I, I think Rangers are going to win. Uh, this is <laughs> this Frankfurt team. They're good, and we're going to learn a hell of a lot more about them at the Rangers review in the coming uh, n- next ten days or so. We're going to know them inside out before this game takes place. But they are absolutely the third best German team that Rangers have played, and they've beaten <laughs> the previous two. So there's nothing to fear from Frankfurt. Yes, they went and beat um, West Ham, who are a good team. Of course, they, they've done that over the last um, over the last two games, and they deserve credit for that. But you know what? Nothing to fear from them whatsoever. If you can beat Dortmund, if you can beat Leipzig, absolutely nothing to go out there and uh, beat Frankfurt. Um, and wow. Guys, absolutely wow. But listen, well, let's get let's get into that in a minute. Let's talk about the, the, the end of the game first. Listen, who else? It had to be John Lundstrom, didn't it? Because <laughs> the guy, I mean, he's he's a, he's a legend, isn't he? I mean, he's, a, he, he's gone he's gone from zero to cult hero to legend in three and a half months. Yeah. There's never been any uh, trajectory like it in the history of of Rangers. I mean, it's absolutely remarkable what a performance this guy gave. Joshua, tactically, this guy is. I mean. He's the most important player on the team now, isn't he? He must, he tell you, must be tired because the work that he puts in in, in games um, is remarkable. I think in, in, there's an argument that in European competition he is, Johnny, because, you know, we can, we've spoken of before about all the things he does well, but I think also his aggression last night, you know, he ranges the marking up man for man at the back. For a player that hasn't really played centre-back before, so I'm going to have to soak here centre back before um, and then to go and be aggressive and, and step onto the game make important interception 
it's just dynamic and, and you know we spoke as well about Glenn Kamara yesterday I, I said I thought he'd start because he offers you that option to play with his back to goal and you see for that that first goal how important that is Van Bronckhorst devised plans to get up the pitch without Morelos um, and, and, and without Ruth and he did so uh, very successfully so the midfield was really dynamic and and, and um, I think that was a, a, a big part in it and I must give credit to a friend of the show Adam Thornton, who asked the Calvin Batty question, it wasn't me. I can't take credit for that. Um, but the, the point that Van Bronckhorst was, was touching on about that was um, when asked about dynamic players, how close they are. And, and I think you look through that team last night, and, and um, there's a lot of athletes in there. And that's you need that at this stage of European competition. And Rangers didn't have that without Lundstrom and Bassi in particular in, in, in the team last year. But Lundstrom, I mean, it was only here on February the 2nd, Johnny. No, the, was it the 5th against Hearts? That was his first. I remember John Lundstrom when he was on the had the ball on the ball part of the fun, um, and he made a slightly rescue pass and it came off. But it was one of these moments where his reputation was so fragile with the support that he'd have been lambasted had that pass gone anywhere else but his intended recipient. And now you look at him and as you say, he's an absolute cult hero. And, and I mean, if they go and win it, he'll be a legend. But having sent them through to the final, he's, <laughs> I think he's probably a legend anyway. Yeah, I mean, le- the yeah. word legend in football is obviously an overused term. There's no doubt about it. It's a bit of a cliche. But you look at the players from 2008 and how they're lauded and how they're still talked about. And this is I've been saying this all week. This is a better team than 2008. These these are guys that are doing it on their own steam by being better than the opposition, not by scra- scrapping and, yeah. s- you know, scraping their way through. And, and listen, I don't want to be negative about that Walter Smith team. That was an incredible achievement given the quality they had to get where they did. That was unbelievable. But this Rangers team is different gravy, guys. Absolutely different gravy. This is the best team that we've seen in Europe for a long, long time in Scotland. A long, long time. The way they control games, the way they they do it with football, which is so, so unusual for Scottish teams. They are going to Germany and playing against German teams and, and beating them with the ball. And that is... That is quite something, it really is. Um, l- listen, so the final whistle comes around, I, and J- Josh, I'm going to come back to you on this one. What was that moment like within the stadium when that final whistle went? Was it absolute bedlam? We've seen your TikTok videos. I posted them up on Twitter because some of them are absolutely crazy. Looks like the press box is getting overrun by fans. I don't know what's <laughs> going on there. Yeah, it was. Um, it was. Uh, it, it, it looked was, like it, a it, moment it, of it, sheer it, delirium. Yeah. Oh no, hundred percent. Yeah. What else was deafening was the whistling when Leipzig had the ball in the final five minutes. And I thought, you see, if you're on that pitch, there's no chance you're managing to organise defensively because you could hear yourself think. Um, but just yeah, crazy. Um, stadium was absolutely bouncing. Um, as you'd expect it uh, and more. And uh, the, the press box was all, as I said to you last night, Johnny. All behind me, there was rows of people kind of standing up and, and celebrating and just just enjoying the moment because moments like that don't come around too often when you beat a team that's again as we said fight far out, out with your financial stratosphere and you beat them fair and square at home i think that's the yeah. thing as well as celebrating the achievement um of getting there you're selling celebrating the achievement of deserving to be there and i think people are just really proud of their, of their team and and as we've discussed as well this team risked having a bit of an unfulfilled legacy and not winning the league um, but what you would say is that no one can doubt their quality. You can have discussions about why they weren't successful in other areas in, in these past four years, but no one can doubt the quality and the performance ceiling of this team because to go and do that season last season and then to go and reach this this um, you know this stage of European competition is is a, just a demonstration of quite how good they are. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in terms of um, the captain, Derek, I don't think we should leave it any longer before we touch on this guy. <laughs> Unbelievable level of performance since he arrived at Rangers. I remember in the Championship, and let's be honest, it was the, the Scottish Championship, but he was scoring goals left, right and centre for fun, and you thought, well, I but can he do it when he takes a step up? And he did take a bit of an adjustment to step up, I think, in his first season or two, um, both defensively and going forward. Uh, the goals dried up somewhat by his own standards, but in the last two or three years, uh, the guy is, uh, he's just a phenom. He's incredible. So I've never seen a, 
numbers like this from a right back in my time watching Scottish football. And uh, he surely go, goes down now as the greatest right back of the modern era that Rangers have had. Obviously, John Gregg played right back. So yeah. you've got to be careful about how, how deep your hyperbole goes. But, I mean, in terms of what he's given to Rangers for £250,000 or whatever it was alongside Martin Waghorn, this guy has been an absolute sensation. Yeah, you're talking about legends, Johnny, and, and James Tavenier is certainly a Rangers legend. Um, wrote a piece, I think, last week with regards to that. Um, his numbers are incredible. His, cons his consistency is bewildering. Uh, how he just keeps going season after season, posting the sort of numbers that, that defy belief. Um, and, yeah, he's, he's been a revelation for Rangers. I don't think anyone would have envisaged he would go on and be such a success albeit I know he's only lifted one league title, but apart from where he's come from and where the club have come from from when he, when he arrived, it is remarkable. And to lead them into a European final, and he's done it, uh, I think the old uh, argument is, is he a proper Rangers ca captain? I think that has been put to bed well and truly. He leads by example. Uh, he did again last night, uh, and it's a joy to watch him, watch him play. And um, I think he's going to be huge in, in the final as well. And um, he's, he's going to end up, as we mentioned at the top of the show, Johnny, top goal scorer in the Europa League, for which for a right back just uh, is, is quite quite amazing, really. Um, so yeah, long may it continue. Another tremendous performance last night, uh, and he will go down as one of the greats. Guys, um, before we go on any further, I just want to give you a bit of a um, advertisement about our subscription at the Rangers Review website. I popped it into the. Um, the chat box there. Uh, we'll get back to the chat in a second. But for us to do this, we absolutely ask that you go on and support us. And the way to do that is to go onto our website and subscribe for three months for a pound uh, for three pounds. Um, that gives you access to all our content ad light on the website. We've got big interviews. We've got tactical analysis from Joshua. We've got world class data from Statsbomb that enables and that allows us to really really dive deep into every single Rangers game and bring you all the stories and sometimes that's stories that, that no one else will even thought of or, or have even seen um, in terms of what we can get from our Stats Bomb partnership. It's absolutely incredible. You get all that for three months for £3. That's going to be obviously every kick up to the point of both Seville and Hamden. We've got the league games still as well and then we'll have pre-season and then into next season, which will hopefully be the Champions League. And, of course, the Super Cup on the 10th of August. Guys, who do we want? Real Madrid or Liverpool? Don't mind. Do the they double over Real Madrid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, what, yeah. A, what a symmetry yeah. would be to the season if you start the season by beating Real Madrid and you end the season by beating Real Madrid? It's a call with the winner again. Yes. <laughs> um, listen, let's, let's touch on that, um, uh, that final that's coming up. What kind of threat did Frankfurt pose? I mean, guys, I'll be honest, I've not done a lot of deep dive uh, digging into Frankfurt at the moment. I do know in terms of their Bundesliga place, they are well down the table in terms of uh, the, 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 other two player, the other two teams Rangers have played. For example, at the moment, Dortmund sits second on 63 points. RB Leipzig sit fifth on 54 and to get to Eintracht Frankfurt, you need to go quite a long way down. They're sitting in 11th. And perhaps the, the, the thing that you want to look for in terms of uh, Frankfurt, in 32 games, they have conceded 46 goals and only scored 42. Their league form really isn't great at all. They've won 10, drawn 10, and lost 12. Now, listen, that's, that, that's 11th in, a, in an 18-team league. They, are, they have not had a good season. But in the Europa League, it's been totally different, Joshua. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, I, um, I've not looked into them much either, so I'm distracted by this rain. I think this will be my final morning briefing contribution for this morning. But um, <laughs> they're a uh, they'll be a great team, Johnny. That's the thing, you know. Regardless of their position in the table, I think, but probably they are the third best German team that Rangers have played. But I know, you know, still a team that has greater financial capabilities that have spent a lot more. And um, Rangers will need to, to perform at their absolute best to win it. But um, why not is what we've been saying for a while. So why can't that continue? But uh, I'm going to get back to, to HQ, dry up, have my morning coffee and, and 
look at some analysis. So you've not got time for coffee. Get stuck right in. I'm not having any of that, young man. I can't do any, I can't do anything about coffee. You've got to earn your corn to get to Seville. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Done that, mate. Right. Hey, have a good day, everyone. Chat that. Cheers, Josh. Yeah, we'll get maybe get but Joshua back on once the data has been looked at. We'll get some tactical analysis from last night, although I'm not sure how much appetite there is for a tactical deep dive. It's more yeah. emotional than tactical. Um, but yeah, um, Derek, you'll both be going out there. What a week it's going to be. You're going to be out there for the five days, drinking in every bit of what will be incredible atmosphere. You've got a lovely, um, well, I suppose it's an apartment, isn't it, in the city? With a, a rooftop terrace, no less, that we're going to be yes. broadcasting from throughout the week. It's going to be marvelous. We're very clever in terms of getting ahead of the game and booking the hotel or the, the apartment. Uh, not so clever on the flights. That was a bit more difficult, but we'll uh, we'll get there. Yeah, yeah, certainly a lot. I was speaking to a few boys last night that booked their flights weeks before Johnny. They, they, yes, they, 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 they'd planned ahead. Uh, I, I wasn't so sure, but uh, yeah, the flights are booked. Uh, looking forward to heading out to, to Seville. Um, I actually passed it heading over to Ben Almadina last night. I seen a, a road sign for, for Seville and thinking to myself, uh, we might be heading there in, in just over a, a week or so's time. So cannot wait to head uh, down there. Uh, it's going to be a fantastic uh, week. Um, the build-up's going to be insane. Uh, and like you, Johnny, I, I feel that Rangers have got the, uh, I think it's written in the stars, they're going to, going to lift this trophy um, and hopefully... Uh, rectify that that semi-final defeat to Frankfurt back in I think 1960 I think it was when uh, they lost uh, 12-4 uh, on aggregate uh, to the Germans on on that occasion um, but it's going to be a brilliant final uh, I think Frankfurt themselves I know I'm not looking too much in a domestic form in Europe they've been terrific beat Barcelona yeah. of course over in, in the new Camp they'll be bringing thousands to Seville as well it's going to be uh, some atmosphere over there yeah, um, I, thought, but, I thought the comments of their um, their chairman was absolutely brilliant. He said, "You know what a final tradition versus tradition." Yeah, and that just sums it up. Two giants in terms of history. Yeah, uh, when it comes to Rangers versus Eintracht Frankfurt, none of this plasticine football, yeah, sports yeah, yeah. wash FC of the likes of Man City, PSG, or the the new club style um, RB Leipzig. Um, it's quite remarkable. So yeah, this is serious. History serious um, chops going back many years. This, of course, is Rangers' fifth European final. This is uh, quite something, Josh. Uh, quite something, Derek. I'm I'm losing the plot here, mate. I mean, I've been up <laughs> for like basically you know 28 hours or something like that. So apologies if I'm talking absolute nonsense, which is <laughs> it's, it's not that unusual to be fair. <laughs> um, so in terms of the comments, there's just so much coming in. It's hard to keep track. Um, Joshua must be on Sky Sports News sometime. He's already been on, George. That's why he was at Ibrox. He's already been on. He's really the Sky Sports News Rangers correspondent, and he just kind of should be on the payroll. I think we just pay his salary. They just, you know, they just yeah. borrow him most yeah. of the time. Um, so yeah, he's already been on there this morning. I'm sure that video will be on social media before you know it. Um, so much happiness and delight, and people telling us how they're going to get to. To Seville, uh, anyone wanting a car share? Jazz looking for someone to, <laughs> to take him along. Um, it's certainly Adam uh, is coming with a wee um, uh, David Brent. Um, <laughs> is with no personality. Little German slugs, yeah. <laughs> um, so quite incredible and lots and lots of people getting in touch. It's absolutely fantastic. Greg Levinson says Rangers will win the final. Um it's it's quite magnificent to see all these people getting so um, excited about what's coming and and, and believe me what what are we what a month we're facing here, Derek. We thought oh. April was something special, Scottish Cup final opportunity to win that trophy for the first time in, in many many years. Yeah, and then Europa League final as well. It's going to be absolutely. Incredible, isn't it? I know I keep saying, I keep, I feel like I keep repeating no, myself, but no, no, I'm, what, else I'm you, what else do we have but hyperbole here? Yeah, no, I'm delighted for as well, uh, Johnny. I seen that yeah. clip of Alan McGregor belting out the, the blue sea at Ibrox last night. Now, yeah, it's especially special for him because it, it looks like it may be his last season to bow out, uh, with a Europa League final, uh, would be incredible given the fact that he missed. Uh, the final uh, and semi final at 14 years ago. So, for him on a personal level. I think it's something that you want to uh, bow out with. Uh, it could be a, a right cracking uh, 
end of uh, end of career game that one. Um, yeah, in Europa League final, Scottish Cup final in four days. What a week that's going to be. Um, and, and, and a sort of symmetry there about going to the, the site of Celtic's greatest loss. Yes. And Rangers potentially going there and doing the business. Um, that's what I mean about know. writing in the stars, Johnny. Everything seems to have just uh, aligned here uh, this season. Um, and yeah, I think I think they've got their name on the trophy, very much like Real Madrid with the Champions League, with, with how they've uh, managed to reach the final themselves. Um, so yeah, a Real Madrid Rangers Super Cup final, I can I can see I can see that happening. Which I mean, I mean, if you cast your mind back to the start of the season, um, Malmo, of course, hugely disappointing. <coughs> then Ali Shepard, there was a bit of apathy, I think, uh, with that game. The Rangers supporters didn't really feel up for it, which was understandably so with the carrot of the Champions League dangled in front of them. But from to, to go on from there, Giovanni's first uh, game was, of course, that, that must-win game against Sparta Prague, where they had to win by two clear goals. And it's just uh, steamrolled uh, from then on to, to this point. Um, everyone will be waking up in disbelief if they have went to sleep. Um, <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. I love, I love that as well, Calvin Bass, a little clip of him. Uh, same to you, Jimmy. Um, last yeah. uh, last night on social media, it was uh, really touching. That and that was a, a slight concern. I mean, because he's such a huge figure at Rangers, and he is another legend, Johnny. But um, it, it plays a part in, in so many of the players and the coaches' lives. Um, but they certainly did it for uh, Jimmy last night. They certainly uh, um, made him proud. Um, he'd be looking down last night, and it was uh, it was just sensational. Like I said earlier on, Glenn Kamara's touching tribute as well when he scored was was fantastic. So. Let's hope they can go on and, and win the trophy for, for Walter and Jimmy. Right, Derek, you've been in long enough. You've done an incredible job. Absolutely blitzed last night, hung over <laughs> this morning. I mean, he's got a good metabolism, the big man. He works out, keeps himself trim, unlike the big uh, Jabba here. But regardless, <laughs> you've done well coming on and uh, and giving your two cents worth. It was an important day, but coming in on your holidays, from Malaga, that is a level of dedication that I can only give a Scott Arfield salute to. So thank you very much, big man. I'll uh, let you press on now. Folks, obviously, um, thanks to you for joining us. It's been remarkable. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, you can talk to us tomorrow morning. We'll, I'm sure we be drilling into even more detail this. We might even come out again later on with some tactics talk. Um, but until then, thanks so much for watching. As I, as I said earlier, again, Please go on. If you've not subscribed to the website, come and support what we're doing. I've got to send these two guys off to Spain, and I've got to pay for that somehow. So to do that kind of content, we've got to get you to subscribe and support what we're trying to do at the Rangers Review, which is provide a completely different style of Rangers coverage. Um, and we hope you love what we do and will help us by backing us to do that. Until next time, guys, thank you.